Hi folks. Hi folks, we're doing the history of the Church of Lorenzo Snow. I think you'll find his life very interesting and very monumental in terms of the change in the church had to occur after experience while he was the president of the church. So without further ado, we'll just jump right into Lorenzo Snow. Church of the turn of the 20th century. The administration of Lorenzo Snow began to preside at age 85. That's pretty old, especially back then. Five foot, five inches, 130 pounds. Very small man. Great missionary opening door to gospel in Italy and Switzerland. Presiding officer of church in northern Utah. Authorized the famous couplet, As man now is, God once was. As God now is, his man may become. That was, of course, originated by Leonard Snow. Succession in the presidency. President Wilford Woodruff had told Lorenzo that if he died first, Lorenzo was to immediately reorganize the first presidency, retaining George Q. Cannon and Joseph F. Smith as counselors. He told him to consider this a revelation. When President Woodruff became sick, President Snow went to the Salt Lake Temple and pled for his health so he would not have to leave the church. Let's, let's move this. When he heard that Wilfred Woodruff had died, he returned and reminded the Lord of his plea, but said, Thy will be done, and offered himself as president. He pled for direction from the Lord, and waited there several hours, and nothing came. No impression, no voice, no answer. Discouraged, he left the room. As he was walking through one of the temple hallways, he saw before him standing above the floor the Savior of the world. He was told that he was to be President Woodruff's successor. He was again instructed to go right ahead and reorganize the first presidency of the church at once and not wait as had been done after the death of the previous presidents. Sometimes in three and a half years. Without telling a living soul of his experience, he offered to step down as president of the quorum and allow that quorum to choose his successor to Wilford Woodruff. They unanimously sustained him, and afterwards he told his experience and explained that he wanted to see if the quorum possessed the same spirit that the Lord had revealed unto him. Apostolic seniority clarified. Brigham Young Jr. and Joseph S. Smith, both ordained apostles years before, they were admitted into the Quorum of the Twelve. At the death of Franklin D. Richards, a question arose as to whom had seniority. It was determined at the meeting in the Salt Lake Temple that although Brigham Young Jr. was ordained in 1864 and Joseph F. Smith in 1866, because Joseph F. Smith entered the quorum a year earlier than, B. Y. than Brigham Young Jr., he had seniority. This, of course, led to Joseph F. Smith being the president of the church, which is key. Solving the church's financial problems. The church had gone $300,000 in debt as a direct result of the Edmonds-Tucker Act, court fees, etc. Members were reluctant to pay tithing during the 1880s and 1890s because the money was confiscated by the U.S. government. By 1898, the church was at $1,300,000 in debt, and the monthly interest payment alone was over $100,000. President Woodruff had tried to negotiate a $1,500,000 loan, which was in process. The church had been accused by national newspapers that tithing was forced and not a voluntary offerings, and so ecclesiastical leaders had turned to loans to finance the church. Unsettled over the whole matter, President Snow continued to pray and ponder over a solution. Although he received no direct revelation, he did feel keenly 
that he should visit southern Utah at the time they were experiencing a drought. I think most members of the church are familiar with what happened then. Tithing was preached at every state conference with President Snow asking the brethren to specifically mention that this had been a revelation he had received from the Lord. When he preached his sermon back at church headquarters, Elder B. H. Robertson made a motion, which was unanimously adopted, that the saints accept the doctrine of tithing now presented. Oh, well, he knows it. Christ knows, knows it's there. Does he know? Visibly moved, President Snow stood up and declared, Every man who is here, who has made this promise, will be saved in the celestial kingdom. The saints paid twice as much tithing than they had the two previous years and the church was debt-free by 1907. Against the advice of financial experts, President Snow made the decision to continue to have the finances of the church controlled by the First Presidency, as per Doctrine and Covenants, Section 120. Nazareth News, official church news organ. Three months after being sustained of the church's president, President Snow brought the Deseret News back under church control. Since 1892, the newspaper had been leased to George Q. Cannon and his sons. President Snow called Char Charles W. Penrose as editor, and the newspaper again became the official organ of the church. Progress under divine leadership. The first single sister missionaries, Lucy Jane Brimhall and Amanda Inez Knight, are called on a mission to Great Britain. The Church's emphasis upon missionary work during the decade of 1890 to 1900 is reflected in the fact that the number of missionaries doubled. Turn of the century. As the world looked forward to a new century, Church members were also filled with anticipation. President Snow prepared a proclamation entitled Greeting to the World, in which he clearly described the kind of world that the Church was trying to build. He hoped the 20th century would be an age of peace, of greater progress, of the universal adoption of the Golden Rule. <clears throat> he was in the turns of fear what's happening here. Okay, I think. <sighs> War with its horror should be but a memory. The aim of nations should be fraternity and mutual greatness. The welfare of humanity should be studied instead of the enrichment of a race of the extension of an empire. Awake, ye monarchs of the earth and rulers among the nations, and gaze upon the scene which the early rays of the rising millennial day gild the morn of the 20th century. Disband your armies, turn your weapons of strife into implements of industry, take the yoke from the necks of the people. He bore his testimony that God his Son and holy angels had spoken to men, and that God called upon all people to repent and come unto him. President Snow then, in his 87th year, concluded by invoking the blessing of heaven upon the earth inhabitants and wished them peace. To usher in the new year and the new century, special services were held in the tabernacle on December 31, 1900, commencing at 11 p.m., 5,000 saints gathered and saw the famed organ pipes illuminated with a cluster of electric lights fashioned into the words, 
Welcome, 1901, Utah. A devotional spirit pervaded the meeting, which was conducted by Salt Lake State President Angus Cannon. The church welcomes in the new century with 43 states, 20 missions, and 947 wards. A uh, hundred years later, is over 20,000 wards. 283,765 members, four temples in operation, 796 new missionaries. That's a lot for then. Missionary training centers established in Logan, Salt Lake, Provo, and Thatcher, Arizona, offering a free six-month course for those leaving for the field. Six months. President Lorenzo Snow became most concerned with the necessity of taking the gospel to all the world. The duty of such an undertaking rested with the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. Under President Snow's direction, the Apostles laid plans to open new areas of the world for missionary work. In 1901, plans were announced to send Elder Heber J. Grant to Japan. Although terribly in debt, he knew the call was inspired and by miraculous means was able to leave. Elder Grant dedicated Japan for the preaching of the gospel. He published a series of articles in the Japan Mail, one of the most influential papers in Tokyo, in an attempt to counter their libelous attacks against the church by the ministers of other Christian denominations that had, left, that had felt threatened by the arrival of Mormon missionaries. Although he left after two years, Elder John W. Taylor stayed for seven and translated the Book of Mormon in Japanese. After Elder Grant left for Japan, the work was reopened in Mexico, and plans were made to open the work in the Austrian Empire and Russia. Throughout 1901, President Snow bemoaned the fact that so much of the Apostles and Seventies time was taken by local needs. He reiterated the fact that their mission was to take the gospel to the world, and he re-emphasized the need to do so. I also remember my testimony of the of the uh, presidency of Lorenzo Snow. It was short, but it was a remarkable, and then he got the church out of debt, and he sent missionaries to tell the world. And sometimes it doesn't matter how long our 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 position in our church is, it doesn't matter what we do while we're there. I say in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I wouldn't be here except for...